What's up, everybody? Hey, welcome to another edition of Pulling Trigger. And uh, today, Josh and I are joined by our friend, Chris Parrish, and we're going to do something a little different. We're not talking hobby style RC monster trucks today. We're actually going to talk vintage. I guess it's vintage because it's 90s. 90s is vintage now. Uh, Tyco RC. And I've got a ton of comments to get to. I posted this on our YouTube page and our Facebook page that we were going to talk about these trucks. So many people have memories to share. These things are awesome. Before we get into it, Josh, you want to say what's up? Hey, what's up, everybody? Sitting here and looking, I'm actually looking at a photo of a Tyco Turbo Hammer right now. That was my first RC truck as a kid. And uh, honestly, whenever you said that you suggested this, it immediately floods of memories from childhood popped right up into my head. Yeah. And with, speaking of the memories, when we posted it, our friend and racer, Chris, if you want to introduce yourself, you, uh, you had a lot of memories to share. So I was like, just let's just get on the show. Just do it with us. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I had a very nerd moment there when I saw the uh, the fast track sitting on the Trigger King page, and uh, much like Josh, it brought back a ton of memories. Uh, we had a a fleet of the old Tyco toy grade turbo RCs in uh, in our archives uh, growing up, and uh, we loved the things. We didn't even know that hobby grade existed, but toy grade Tyco all the way. Yeah, you know it's it's interesting how so for so many of us. And I, I don't know your personal stories, either of you, like your bridge to the hobby. But I know for me, it actually wasn't a Tyco. It was a Nico. We're going to use I'm going to talk about those in another uh, another video at some point. But I did have Tycos. My friends had Tycos. And of course, it was if you used to go to like Toys R Us is what I remember vividly. There was like an RC aisle and slot car aisle. They had them together. And that was like heaven on earth, basically. Like it was the. It was so cool. And these old trucks that we're going to talk about were so, I guess, hobby-ish. Like, they looked wicked. They, oh, yeah. They, they look really yeah. wicked. And honestly, when you say that, I think of the, You ever see the sound of music when the girl's like, she's doing this? And <laughs> that was me as a kid walking <laughs> down that hobby aisle. Or not the hobby aisle, the toy aisle back then. Just seeing all those Tyco RCs, Nico RCs, stuff like that. Your, your, your mind is blown as a kid walking down there and seeing all this stuff. Yeah, um, and I remember uh, KB toys as well back then, and KB would have ads and everything with these in them, and of course you see the ads, and I remember like pictures of the truck staged, and um, the commercials for all these, which they're all on YouTube um, that people have posted, are so incredible that like even nowadays, it's like I want to run to the store and go buy one of these so I can go run in the wilderness or something with these. Oh, yeah, we were just talking about before we got yeah. on air about how, man, I'd really like to go to eBay right after this is over and buy a Tyco RC Turbo Hammer. <laughs> yeah, so you know what? Let's Here's how we're going to do this. Let's get into the discussion because um, how I'm going to do this here, I've got some Google image searches ready to go, a bunch of tabs with a lot of this famous vehicles here. And um, so we're just going to kind of scroll through and just talk about a little bit. All of these videos, if you guys search, you know, you guys are watching, you search any of these vehicles on either Google or something, you're going to find commercials for them. You're going to find pictures of them. These things still have a rabid fan base. And also you can find people are now taking these trucks and modifying them to brushless and doing all kinds of crazy stuff, putting hobby grade stuff in it. And um, let's get going here with what I think is probably the most legendary. This is the Tyco Hammer. And this truck here, uh, you know, I never owned one of these, sadly. I had people in the neighborhood oh, that owned them. Poor dog. God, I, I love Your childhood was ruined. Love yeah. We'll, just, we'll look at it this way. Yeah, so. Um, it wasn't the first one we had, but it was definitely the best. I mean, you want to My brother and I it? each got them for Christmas. Um, our, our typical deal was uh, we'd get a, a Tyco for Christmas every year. And so uh, the, the hammer was... Uh, not the first, but it was definitely the best. And we were thrilled because we were monster truck fans. This was the closest thing that we'd ever seen to a, a fast and fun monster truck. And this thing was beefy. I mean, we put it through uh, a lot when we had them. Uh, I had the black one. My brother had the neon one because, of course, you had to have different trucks. Um, but the springs were, were super stiff relative to like the Bandit or the Fast Tracks or some of the other things that we'll talk about. And it just looked rad. I mean, it had kind of that Dabney alien look with the uh, the rear spoiler and that giant motor. And the thing just flew. I mean, we 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 set up bike ramps and things and launched them off of that. But uh, these things were awesome. I, I still have mine. It had 
uh, I'm, I'm missing the radio, so I haven't been able to get it going. And it's got some, uh, some repairs from where I knocked the front corner off, but mm. still got this baby. You know, I wish I still had mine. Uh, I can't remember if I got it for Christmas or a birthday, but uh, one special memory that I have with that truck was my late stepfather and I just sitting outside and he had built me a jump. Uh, the backside of it was kind of a flat top, but he had put a big foot four by four decal on top of it. And I just remember for hours upon end going out there with him sitting on the step and watching me just repeatedly jump this truck over and over and over again. Um, this truck is also where my, my modifying phase kind of stepped in because I know people are going to hate me for this, but I took and spray painted that neon body black and I found and printed uh, digger grave digger number seven decals and stuff. And I tried as much as I could <laughs> to make this truck look as close to a grave digger as I could. I took a poster board over the back, covered the engine to make it look like a panel van and everything. You know, I, I'm jealous of both of you that this, I, I didn't have one. I remember um, running against these though in the neighborhood with my Nico. And of course these had the turbo, the turbo mode. We should talk about that. The marketing that behind it, you know, that turbo, like you could kick in the turbo and make it extra fast. And then all the commercials for all of these trucks, they show you kicking in like a, they show the person kicking in a turbo mode and like the truck gets blurry and it takes off. So of course mm -hmm. it's, you know, as a kid, it's the coolest thing ever. Like it actually has a turbo mode. And, um, I, no, I'd never had a hammer. I always thought they were awesome. I remember seeing them in the store, the black and the um, black and the yellow one here. This is like, I, I think this is the iconic one that many from our generation probably remember. Well, the next one too, that we're going to talk about. Um, but I, I, the hammer's awesome. I, I wish, I need to buy one, really. I, I, I do need you to buy me one. Both. Me both. <laughs> you know, this, this body though is so cool that a lot of these are really, but I'm shocked no one has done this yet in our series, like our RC series to uh, use a J concepts or Proline body or something and paint it up like the hammer. Like I've wanted to do that for the Nico Black Thunder, which was my first real kind of hobby grade, non hobby grade, like this kind. I call this like high end toy grade, right? I guess that's the, oh, yeah. I, 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 that's what you, I suppose, would call it. It's funny though how nowadays the toy grade stuff, there's a lot more of it, but it looks so, I don't know. I don't know if it's much out there. Do what? I was going to say cartoonish. It, yeah, it does. And it's, I mean, like this is a cartoonish truck. Look at the huge engine in the yeah. back. The oh, wing, yeah. But it, I don't know. It just, it's different. I love how this screams. I, the, the, the Tyco's performance, I, I feel like was the emphasis point with, with the hammer particularly. Um, whereas I feel like today it's almost more of a, a niche. How can it be different? And this had different looks. Um, so it's not that it wasn't uh, trying to get people on looks, but uh, the performance was there behind it, which I think was always pretty cool. Yeah. And that two stage trigger. Um, so you knew when you hit the turbo, the light came on and the, the trigger clicked. Yeah. You were the trigger king right then. They knew oh, yeah. what they were doing with this, some brilliant product design behind this. Cause all kids, it was like, they were, these were the badass things to get, you know? So it was pretty cool. So let's move on here. Um, if the Tyco we'll say is maybe one a, this next one is one B and I actually did have one of these. This is the legendary, the, uh, the fast tracks here. And let's see which one to talk about. I actually, they had several of these. Um, we'll pull this one up. I had the, the uh, this one here, actually. Where's the picture of it? Sorry, guys. I'm, that's the problem with me using an image search here. Oh, yeah, look at all this good stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I had a red one. I had the, I guess you could call it the car, the buggy. They also had a truck. Buggy, right yeah. And um, I have a I have a good story behind this one. I want to hear from uh, from you guys first, Chris. I'll let you start here. Did you have one of these? I did have one of these. Uh, being that it came out in 1990, which was still squarely in the uh, the big monster tank phase mm -hmm. of the one to one scale industry, we had the trucks because they looked the most like monster tank trucks, and, and yeah. we treated them just like that. Uh, again, Christmas presents. My brother had the neon one. No, I had the neon one. He had the black one. Um, we'd race these things over car sets, uh, TNT style, make up little tracks and things like that and put them through far more than they should have been put <laughs> through. Um, 
still have mine. And actually just within like the last three months, maybe four months, I got it running again. Cause the big problem we seemed to have was we'd crack the, uh, the rear housing where the tubes go into the motor mount. Mm -hmm. And so I, I finally, uh, got enough epoxy and, uh, just slathered it with it and got that thing working and took it outside and had far more fun with it than I should have for what it was. Yeah, these were, these were, they were fun. Josh, what was your experience? Well, I never had one, but a neighbor had one and I can remember being incredibly jealous of said neighbor because I would just be peeking out my window and I'd see this truck going and there was a ditch right by his house, but he had worn it out so much with this truck that it had turned into a jump. So he's just out there over and over again, jumping this truck. And I'm sitting in the window going, I really <laughs> want this. I really want this truck. <laughs> But uh, ne unfortunately, never had one. But man, did I ever want one? Yeah, they're um, they were cool. So I mean, we'll uh, as Chris said, when these came out, they were right around when the monster tank thing, like the actual like Bigfoot fast tracks and everything was was going. And so I'm sure that these were inspired by the monster tanks that, that came out. And uh, so I had the buggy and or whatever you want to call it. Let me go here. There was actually, there was a bigger version and a smaller version of it. And I, the one I had um, that I remember here was a smaller version of it. And really funny, I remember going to the first hobby shop ever when I discovered hobby shops were a thing. My dad would used to take me up there whenever I discovered it. And of course, I thought it was amazing. He would take me up there. This is the early 90s to like Friday night racing. And the, the adults would let me corner marshal every once in a while, just flip the trucks around. I thought it was cool. But one Saturday... I wanted to go up there and dad brought me up there with the fast tracks. The track, it was a carpet track, was totally empty. And this is, this is all I had, right? So I brought the fast tracks, which was, wow, cool by itself, slow as hell on, for a, an actual racetrack. So I was out there by myself with the fast tracks, driving over an actual RC racetrack for the first time. And of course the fast tracks would just go off the jump and just fall straight over. Like it wouldn't jump, it would just doom. And I was so slow. And the owner of the hobby shop, you know, because I think I was, I had to have been nine, I think, nine or maybe 10, I think nine. And the owner felt bad that this kid who comes up here on Friday nights, you know, and is trying to help out and everything. Here he is with this, with this slow vehicle. And um, so he goes behind the counter and my memory's hazy. It was um, the old Lozy truck. And I forget which the junior T I forget. Pardon, pardon, I'm forgetting on that, but it, it was the old Lozy, the first gen Lozy race truck. And he let me drive it because he could tell I was responsible enough. And going from this to an actually race prepped Lozy, like I didn't understand the world difference. Like that was like, everything changed pretty much for me from then on. It was like, I have to do this once I got my hands on a real race truck. So it's funny that this fast tracks, the small one, is what I had out there. And finally the hobby shop owner felt bad enough to, uh, uh, to, to give this guy, this, this little kid, an actual race truck. And I fell in love with the hobby and I started racing in a kid's league. I had a Traxxas Hawk two for Christmas the next year. And then that was all she wrote for me, but that's, so that's my fast tracks memory. It's a fun memory having it out on the track and just doom, doom, doom. and uh, Open the floodgates. It, yeah, it did. It did. So uh, the fast tracks is popular to this day. Of course, uh, let's move on here. We've got a bunch of these to go through. So this is the Scorcher. If you guys remember this one, uh, my neighbor actually growing up had one of these and I got to drive one of these quite a bit. Uh, did any of you guys ever drive one of these before? Never had one, never had one, actually never even seen one until we started talking about doing this. But really? Just, I'm just surprised. Like, just, like every, just like everything else though, as soon as I see it, I want it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't have the, uh, the Scorcher. It looks like it's got stick controls just like the, uh, the Fast Tracks. And I, at first, I kind of thought it had the, the same body as the Hijacker, which we did have. Um, but I think that was actually a Lamborghini-based well, body. That, we're going to talk uh, about the Hijacker in a minute. Ah, well, we'll get past that. But yeah, I never had a Scorcher. Yeah, so my neighbor um, had the red one, and I got to drive it a bunch. Yes, it was tank controls. It was faster than the, um, the, the treaded one, as you might imagine. But um, it handled the same. It looked... It looked cool. Of course, it looked like Space Age, right? And even the name was pretty badass. I thought like Scorcher and of course the yeah. red one. Um, yeah, it kind of reminds me of Future Foot, but that's another discussion. Yeah, I see. Yeah. I see what you mean there, actually, a little bit. It, it does. It has that kind of that canopy look. So 
we don't have to spend much time on that one. It's not a monster truck, but it's still a really cool, you know, vehicle. Um, let me see here. Well, if I can get into the, uh, here we go. All right. So Josh, this is the Python. Now I wasn't, I don't, I remember the commercial what? after you said it, Josh, hang on. I'm trying to find a good picture of it here. Uh, you want to talk about it, Josh? Cause you had one of these. Yeah, I had one when I was a kid. And the main reason that I had it was obviously we're all monster truck fans. As soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, there's my snake bite right there. Uh, I kept calling it poison for some reason. But uh, the Python truck was cool in the fact that you could sneak up on somebody oh. and hit the little button. And if you had enough water in the back of it, you could really squirt a nice jet of a stream of water right towards somebody. Oh and I, I used to absolutely love sneaking up on my sister when she was doing something with this truck and just blasting her right square in the butt usually <laughs> had, had you seen this chris were you aware of this truck no this is the most amazing thing i've i've seen in a, in a while look I at mean, the commercial is... it's literally oh, no. you hit the button it looks like the truck and then you hit the button on the top of the remote is a lot of these trucks did have these buttons that did functions mm -hmm. uh, which is things. it was really neat i mean it, i still think it's pretty slick that they had uh kind of the convertible functions on several of these yeah, multi multi-channel remotes which was cool you know for so this credit. was smaller than some of the other turbo vehicles we were talking about isn't it oh yeah it's it's smaller okay but it had some get up and go to it i mean i could get some air with it off of some of my little baby jumps that i used to have when i was a kid it was absolutely zero suspension on the thing, though. It kind of reminded me of watching Casper back in the day in TNT, just yeah. in the truck doing this. But yeah, whenever I whenever I was a kid, all my RCs or whatever that I had, I would pretend that they were actual vehicles that you would see at, say, TNT or USHRA event. And like I said, this was my snake bite. And I even flipped the head up and raced it with the head up, just so it looked like, to me, it had the snake <laughs> on it. This would be, I'd like to have one of these nowadays, just because it's so crazy with those how it's a water gun transformer truck. The water gun really threw me off when I saw that. Uh, Cause I, I, I saw the, the Python at first and you put up the ad and oh my goodness, it squirts water. No, hang on, it doesn't, squirt, it doesn't squirt water, it squirts snake venom. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You gotta I'm watch the commercial sorry. for this. I, I don't wanna pull the commercial up cause I don't wanna, I don't wanna get a copyright ding on here, but. Uh, the commercial for this is amazing. And whenever I saw it, I, I, I don't know how, like I, I vaguely remember the commercial, but I never saw one of these in the wild. This is the only one of these I don't think I actually saw, uh, like that I can remember actually seeing in person. Yeah, it's a, it's a cool truck. Um, one second here, guys, let me get going to the next one. All right, so we have the Bandits. This one here, yes. uh, I, I remember seeing this truck. This might be the best looking one that they that they released. It looks fast and with those big meats on the back. Um, you have one of these, right, Chris? I do. I still have the Bandit. Um, I, I consider this the first real Tyco I had. Um, had a couple small, I think I had like a mini hopper or something like that. Um, but this is where things got legit and I remember seeing the commercial and knew we had to have these because like the hammer, they sold you with the commercial and they did it well. Um, plus the idea of kind of the, uh, the, the stadium off-road truck or the Baja truck. Um, they were just awesome. Uh, another turbo truck. Um, but something we hadn't touched on yet with, uh, particularly with the hammer, the uh, fast tracks and the bandit. Another neat thing was, they all had a switch on the back for high and low gear. So you could, uh, if you needed the torque, you, you'd shift down into uh, to low gear. Or if you wanted to go fast and blaze it up the driveway, you flip it into high and, and the truck would scream. And another truck that I knocked the front corner off, but uh, finally uh, rigged some things together to make the suspension work in the front again and uh, piece the truck back together a couple months ago. And and my son's been uh, enjoying taking the, the, the toy grade trucks out to the driveway and running them around. Josh, what do you think? Did you oh, have I, I had one of these when I was a kid and uh, I don't remember like playing with it very much, but like, I like I was saying earlier, uh, this was kind of like my barefoot in my little wannabe TNT little shows that I would do with myself as a kid. Um, I, I enjoyed it, uh, but it, to me, it didn't live up to what the hammer was as far as I was concerned. And 
it was fun to drive around, but it couldn't really do the monster truckish things that you wanted it to do. I want I wanted something that would do a wheel stand. I wanted something that could do a donut, and that's what the hammer was for. This was just kind of something to drive around in a circle in the backyard. Yeah, I so I didn't own one of these. A friend had one. I desperately wanted one of these though because it looked to me this looked like a pulling truck. It looked like a two wheel drive pulling truck. And as somebody who grew up a hardcore truck and tractor pulling fan, this reminded me in a vague way of the Orange Blossom special. It was about as close as uh, I was going to get, I think, to RC mode um, at the time. But it also, again, it looked like a Baja off-road truck. I think aesthetically, this is probably the best one. Uh, it's like if you look at it through a modern lens, this looks fantastic. And even those tires are pretty, pretty killer. This is another one. The Nissan hard uh, body. Yeah, yeah, I think that looks awesome too. Someone should... Uh, Someone should redo this for, for Trigger King. This would be fun to have, to have one of these. In my early stages of introducing myself to the, the hobby grade hobby, um, I, because I didn't get into the, the hobby grade until <laughs> mid-2010s. Um, but one of the first things I wanted to do was take, a, take my old bandit body, since the truck wasn't working, and put it on. A, a hobby grade RC, um, something like my Wheelie King, but then I re quickly realized, wow, yeah, the, the bodies weren't scale to each other, so it didn't quite work, but the intent yeah. is there. The, this would lend itself cool because you on the back, you have that 9.6 turbo, you could put 7.2, 7.2 turbo on the back for the LiPo for whatever, well, I guess whatever class you're running, it's pretty cool. Uh, definitely love that one. So this is a similar looking truck. We have the Outlaw here now, and this is one that I, I remember seeing the box a few times and the commercial was killer on this one. Let me find a, if I can get a good picture of it. So this is another one I would strongly recommend you guys watch the commercial. You have that insane engine in the back and that engine was removable. And you have, and I don't know how this one works again, I didn't have one, but uh, it shows even on the commercial that when you plug the engine in, you got extra power. And I don't know how that was rigged up. And the truck would run wheelies too. You could do wheelies in it. I would assume that adds a lot of weight in the back. It was a smaller truck though. I remember that this one was smaller. And uh, cause I vividly remember this in Toys R Us actually seeing it. But yeah, the whole gimmick is the whole power boost thing. And the engine in the back of this looks like a power boat. Actually looks like a drag boat engine with the headers yeah. swept back like that. Did it, either of you guys have one of these or see them in person? Did not have one. Uh, actually first time I was introduced to it was when we were scrolling through and doing this stuff again. Um, honestly, I was, as we told, we were talking before we went on air here, I kind of want to get the motor out of the back of it and stick it in one of my, uh, my scale builds. <laughs> it's a neat looking motor. It looked kind of cool on the back of a, a digger truck. Maybe I was going to say that'd be a perfect digger thing with the, uh, those headers sticking back. Chris, did you see this back in the day? I don't remember seeing this one. When you said outlaw, I actually thought it was the, uh, the turbo outlaw sprint car that, uh, and that, is sweet that too. came up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I remember those, and I think those were before my Bandit, and uh, always, I, I remember looking through the uh, the Christmas catalogs, J.C. Penney, Sears, Toys R Us, and uh, seeing right that, and and thought, wow, that is slick. Um, it's got a lot, you see a lot of similarities to to the Bandit. I mean, the same rear wheel set and everything, yep. um, but the car just looks awesome. I mean, it's a great scale uh sprint car it is it is and i never saw in your backyard with that thing do what josh it could be steve kinzer in your backyard with that thing i know uh it, which yeah, i lived in steve kinzer's town so it was natural there you go let's see steve here Parrish. steve Parrish. there you go right <laughs> all right so now we're going to move on to something that wasn't a scale but this one definitely was had a lot of notoriety uh i'm going to guess a lot of people own this one probably they're watching out there um Sorry, here, guys, trying to find a good picture of it. This is another one you would definitely want to see. If you've never seen one of these in motion, watch the commercial. There's YouTube videos of it. The mutator, actually, you could move the axles around, and the truck would, like, lift. You could you could raise the front end. You could raise the back end. You could raise them both. You could slam it. Uh, it was pretty cool like that. Did you guys have these? Wanted one severely when I was a kid. So badly, in fact, that my grandmother had actually bought me for my birthday one year a Super Nintendo system. I'm sitting here playing like uh, Mario with it, and the commercial for this comes on as she's watching TV in the other room. And I, I vividly remember telling her, take that back and get me <laughs> that. 
I wanted that thing so bad. And honestly, uh, I think this thing's probably where they got the ideas for the Fast and the Furious movies for the hydraulics, you know, for the rear and the front. This thing is just <laughs> so cool. I enjoy I enjoyed every single time I saw this thing. And the, the my vivid memory of this is one of the Home Alone movies actually features this in it. And you see, uh, I, I believe that he's, oh, what, what did he do with it? It was one of the traps in the Home Alone movie that uh, the kid did with it. I don't remember. Yeah, I, I don't, I can't quite remember it off the top of my head, but I remember going to see that particular movie in theaters and just laughing my butt off and seeing the mutator in there and this kid just driving it down his hallway and stuff. I didn't own, see, I can't remember if I owned one or if I didn't. I know my neighbor had one. I played with one a bunch though, so I, I might have had one. Um, it didn't look like the other. This is like a different era, I think, where the scaleish looks are. It's, it looks more toy, but it was such a cool like gimmick behind it that it was awesome. And um, if we're going to talk, I guess the uh, the gimmick vehicles here too. Another really famous one is the rebound right here. A lot of people had these uh, where you could run it upside. Basically, it was like a tank. You could run it upside down either way. And that was the whole thing. The gimmick was just run over whatever, flip over, and keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys I remember running. seeing those. The I think this is another that the uh, the commercials were that made it look awesome. Uh, you got the tank controls, but uh, it's kind of just bouncing around everywhere because it's double sided. And and there was a theme kind of for a while. Uh, must have been in that early to mid '90s where um, double sti double sided toys, double sided cars. Um, cause I remember die cast cars that had kind of the same idea going on. Um, but these are kind of neat. I've, I hadn't ever driven one, never owned one, but they're, they're pretty neat. I did get to drive one. I think my nephew is the one who had one and they're pretty cool. I mean, they, they weren't quite unstoppable. Like maybe you would be led to believe in a commercial, like some of the other things, but it was pretty cool. Like the big thing was you just run into a wall and let it run up and flip it and just go the other way. And, uh, hit curbs or obstacles it was pretty cool again this is more the toy style this isn't like a real looking thing but it was still such a cool gimmick for it that like everybody wanted one um let's move on here we're almost through these we'll get to your questions but we've got the turbo hopper here this one i never had one of these either but boy i remember this like how cool it looked this was basically a tamaya style buggy uh, very similar to it to some of the Tamaya designs and it was uh it was great and did you have one of these Chris I had the mini hopper okay. I, I didn't realize there was a a full-size hopper until uh, a couple years later I, I think but we had the the mini hopper so it ran on double A's and wasn't very fast um but yeah this is I, I feel like this is kind of the early portion of the uh the Tyco line particularly the turbo line um, cause I feel like this was like a 1987, 88 truck or buggy. Um, but again, flooded with commercials. I mean, they, they had commercials for all of these things back in the day. Yep. So reminiscent of the Tamiya stuff, which of course was hobby grade, but this is your lower end one. And I think I remember one of these turbo hoppers, actually, someone had one in my kids racing league, if I remember right. Um, which was a lot of fun back then. There's all kinds of just a cavalcade of different hobby stuff, non-hobby stuff. I'm almost positive someone had a red one of these. Did you ever have an experience with these, Josh? Uh, I remember thinking years ago that my, my cousin actually had the, t I thought he had the Tamaya version of this. Uh, it wasn't until years later we were cleaning his garage and I pulled the thing out and I was like, wait a minute, this isn't the, I, I was holding this truck, literally this truck, this body style, yeah. everything. And I'm like, I could have swore this thing was the Tamaya version of it. I'd honestly yeah. never even put it together. That this was a Tyco truck because I remember seeing it when I was really little when he had it. Mm -hmm. And I, I always thought it was the Tamaya truck, but I mean, they do, they look very eerily similar. They're, they look slick. I, they just, they look really good. Um, Talking about the, uh, the similarities to the Tamaya um, kind of along that buggy uh, class. Uh, I had, I guess it was kind of a high grade toy grade st still, but it was based on uh, hobby grade. Uh, and this may be a different broadcast, but uh, I had the old Radio Shack Red Arrow buggy, um, which kind of makes me think of the hopper a little bit. Let's see that. I kind of remember that. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. God, yeah I, lo I love these old boxes. Look at that airbrush art. Like, that's 
whoop, where is it here? <laughs> That's look at yes. That. Powered by the five. I still got it sitting in my basement. <laughs> that's that is slick. Yeah, Radio Shack. You know, that's we should talk about Radio Shack at some point on here when we need because they had a bunch of cool stuff back in the day too. And I don't ever. It's funny I don't ever remember them as much, like as fondly necessarily as I do the Nico or the Tyco. But it's uh, it's funny just how they did have plenty. Boy, look at this. Tell you what, two hundred twenty nine dollars whatever year that this was, that is a lot of money. Oh that, yeah. Yeah. That was basically hobby money for what I read up was essentially very high grade toy grade. Like um, I can't remember what it was based off of. There's, there's something that, that is hobby grade that has a number of interchangeable parts. Um, but this was, this was legit money, but yeah, Radio Shack had some, some, good stuff over the years but not as fond as as Tyco but that may be a different discussion we've got all kinds of time yeah it says here new for 89 so boy if you talk that kind of money in 1989 that's got to be like x max money nowadays yeah, around cool there um, yeah. man yeah that's um wonder what a clod retailed for back then because the clod released in 87 so probably you think 88's when they were really out there and of course I don't remember getting into them, you know, until like the nineties. So I don't know, but yeah, that's, um, that is a pricey toy right there. You're talking, that's like GI Joe, the USS flag territory, the gigantic <laughs> aircraft carrier. Right. Yeah. We need to get one of those for uh, trigger king freestyle just to make toy people cringe. Oh, oh, we should. Hey, if anybody out there has a USS flag, you don't want message. Me. <laughs> have, yes. Have us jump an aircraft. Josh, we should just do that. We should just yes. find, get, get an aircraft carrier to jump because that thing, I've never seen one in person, but I know that it's like ludicrously large. Oh yeah. It's <laughs> huge. And I want to see if I can clear one. That we should do that aircraft, aircraft carrier landing. Maybe that'll be the a contest. See if you can land on the aircraft carrier. I could just say that would be the ultimate. Now that's a win. That would be now the ultimate Trigger King slow motion video right there. The truck trying to land on the aircraft carrier. You heard it here first, guys. This year we'll try and get a USS flag, so we can. We should do that. We shouldn't do. We shouldn't do a freestyle obstacle to just destroy it. We should see if anybody can land. Put the on jump the way back there and see if we can land. Have a clean aircraft carrier landing with a monster truck. There we go. Oh, Lord. I'm we're gonna make, to Google we're gonna make toy now. people cringe right there, but I don't care. <laughs> Hey, if you don't want us to do it, go buy one yourself. All right, we have the last two vehicles here, and then we're going to run through comments quickly because this is going long. We have the Hijacker. Uh, I wasn't even aware of this one, actually, until the other day when we were doing research for this. Um, some people had talked about it, and Chris, I guess I just found out that you had one of these. Basically, it's a Lamborghini Countach that you hit a button and the the, uh, the body pops up. You can see here, I mean, if you in the YouTube there's actually YouTube. Uh, again, I've watched that and you hit a button and it like puts it up. The funny part though, it doesn't look like it actually really does anything suspension wise. It just kind of lifts the body up. It doesn't really <laughs> do anything. Oh, it, it's totally the old school monster truck body lift. It, it, it doesn't increase suspension or provide anything except for it makes it high and more noticeable. But uh, the Lamborghini body. Yeah, I, I had one. Um, the Lamborghini body was sleek. It uh, kind of like the, the Python, it had the, the button on the controller corner um, where you, you push the button and it pops the body up. You could not retract the body, um, but you could push it up. Uh, you had to manually push it back down. It was fairly similar to a bandit in its stance and construction. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the parts are interchangeable. The biggest difference is the, uh, that front uh, skid pad yeah. uh, really created clearance issues um but a lot like the bandit really like uh, this is one of the later ones we had uh but but yeah i still got parts of it at least s sitting in the basement in a tote that's cool yeah again i wasn't familiar with that one before um so our last one here we're going to talk about is not a monster truck it's not a truck at all but it's something that has to be talked about because it was pretty crazy back then this is the typhoon and I remember um, seeing one of these run, and of course the commercial and everything was great. You could, I mean, it's a legit hovercraft. It's a legit hovercraft. These things still have a big following, and our, our good friend Chris Blank, who runs all the orange trucks, has a mint one of these still. Uh, maybe we can talk to him one time at a Trigger King event. We can get 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 him out there in uh, John's Lake. 
get, get them out there, get him out there in the lake, or we could uh, have it just kind of slowly drive under a jump as we jump over it and do another slow mo. I think that'd be kind of cool as well. Yeah, yeah. The uh, I mean, so I, I didn't have one of these. I've never driven one, but these have a following still and pretty. You know, I'd say revolutionary for a toy. It's just a gnarly looking little vehicle. Yeah, I yeah. Mean, I, I, I remember the commercials uh, again and thought man i really need one of those i live nowhere near any sort of body of water but i need one of those even if it means filling up the bathtub never got one um but man they were sweet i've never even seen one in person honestly so i'm gonna go knock on mr blank's door and take out his toy and play with it i remember that they had um oh there was a bunch of them on uh uh, where the toy store i vividly remember that um but yeah guys that's kind of it. i'm gonna stop the share here and i'm gonna get into some comments we will run through these i know that uh, we're running a little bit longer here but we have um let's see here and if you're unfamiliar guys for this weekly show what we're doing on our community tab page on the youtube page a couple days beforehand we will post the topic uh maybe a little bit before if josh and i could figure it out before but we wanted to do this one kind of last minute and uh, anyways, if you check that out, you can leave a comment. We'll read it on the air here or suggest uh, something for another show. And same with our Facebook page. If you check both of those out, if you want to get them right on the air. We're going to go through just real fast here. I'm going to read through the comments on our YouTube post. Black Ops, he says, my first RC was the Tyco Bandit. And I spent lots of time behind the wheel. Great memories. Mike Wright, who from YouTube, he says, my first RC was a Tyco Scorcher. The six-wheel sports car looking thing with tank style steering. My best friend had the hijacker that was a Lambo style car that popped up. See, more people had those. Uh, hi from England, by the way. Love the trucks. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, let's see here. Well, there's a lot of these comments, guys. Sorry to, if you guys want to jump in, feel free to jump in. I'm just going to keep going here. We got one from Facebook here. Brian Medford. This is his fast track sitting in the box right behind him right now and still runs great. Man, if you still got That's that thing cool. running. If you still got that thing running, we need to see some pictures of it. Post it next time. If it's right behind you, prove it. Yeah, picture it didn't happen. <laughs> Josh, you want to take a couple Facebook ones here? Oh, yeah. We've got uh, Elm Hobbies here with a Turbo Outlaw. Says it was the best the little two-wheel drive vehicle that was on four cells. Had a big honking motor you plug into the bed and then added another two cells to it. So you've got a four-cell battery. You essentially turn into a six-cell battery. We were wondering how that worked. I found it just as I was scrolling through right here. Mm. Because it just adds some more cells to it, to the Outlaw. And we got one here, uh, Chris Parrish. I don't know if you guys know him. Uh, it says he still has his fast tracks and bandit. Uh, we'll go over here. I'll skip over to a couple of YouTube comments here. Lane Wait, he says, I didn't know they made a truck version of the fast tracks. When I was younger, I always wanted one. RCs at that time were way out of my price range, as they were for all of us, Lane. Uh, didn't have two pennies to scrape together. It wasn't until fairly recently that I found out the tracks fell off them a lot. I got a lot of RCs now that would make the fast tracks look much more like a paperweight than an RC. Yes. You know, it's, it's come it's a long still ways. Awesome. Our monster <laughs> trucks are big and we've got our, you know, my X max, I've got an X max right off screen here, but you know what? The fast tracks are still pretty bitch, smaller or whatever. Um, oh, yeah, these, I agree. We got are, one, we got one here on Facebook from a guy that a, pe a lot of people may know, Mr. Frank Krimmel, former driver of monster. Oh, yeah. Team. Uh, He's uh, basically says the bandit trucks and the turbo hopper were pretty legit at the time. He remembers running his until he made a jump to a Traxxas Hawk. I mean, the bandit and turbo hopper, is, and that's coming from somebody right there that's driven uh, quite a few monster trucks in his day. So man knows monster what he's jam, Yeah. Oh yeah. And monster jam. I think he drove a couple of colors trucks as well. It's when he first started out. He, I, I actually responded to that you know, personally because he funny, had a funny story. Uh, Frank actually stood behind, it was Quincy, Illinois, and I had my Excalibur truck there just messing around behind uh, Stone Crusher's holler. And Frank's just kind of standing there with his arms on his hips, just watching me. And every time I'd pull a power wheelie, oh, he's got, he's got the track. He's got, he's, he's poking fun at me as I was driving the truck. So I wonder if Frank remembers that. Frank, if you're watching this, I wonder if you remember that. Yeah. I, uh, I responded to his comment because he made a jump to a Traxxas Hawk. And for me, it was a jump to a Traxxas Hawk too. So that was, uh, again, like a light year jump. Let's see here. I'll go back to the YouTube comments. Tim needs a hobby. He says, a Tyco Bandit is why I own so many RCs now. I couldn't get any of that sweet, sweet 9.6 volt turbo action as a kid. The family couldn't swing it, but them's the brakes. I'm making up for it now. 
Yeah, pretty much. I agree with you there. I couldn't get enough of the turbo stuff back then. So now that's what's nice, you know, about being older. Um, back then, I could just lust after it. Now I can just buy all this stuff. It's great. Uh, oh, yeah. To, uh, one thing that we, we didn't touch on yet was the fact when Tyco RC says turbo, there's a lot of ESCs and speed controllers out there now that offer a turbo timing boost. Mm -hmm. It kind of makes you wonder if they were like, oh, you remember Tyco RC? Or they call it turbo. It makes you wonder if that's what they named the turbo timing afterwards. Yeah. That's, yeah, a lot of them do do that. Um, let's see where we, I have Aaron Mason. He says the Tyco hammer was my favorite RC as a kid. I still have my original and I was lucky enough to buy a second one from a fellow student back in high school for $10. The Tyco six by six scorcher was probably a second favorite. That's a pretty good deal for a hammer, 10 bucks. It's a lot of love here for the scorcher too, actually. Several people talk about it. We got one here on Facebook, Ben Buckles. As a 12-year-old kid, I ran my Turbo Bandit as long as I had a battery. Eventually, I got two of them, but the wall charger was so slow, it was a buzzkill. I mean, yeah, that was the buzzkill as a kid. You'd run the battery Four down, hour you'd wait charges. an hour or so to charge it back up. Then you get about 10 minutes worth of fun before you're just like, eh, plug it back in. Yeah, you're doing, you're kind of doing this, just sitting there staring at the wall. <laughs> yeah uh, and we never had multiple batteries like we each had a battery and we'd go out and race it against each other and last man standing competition basically and then plug them back in for the next four hours and wait mm -hmm. yep and of course you you know these are not like kids nowadays if if some youngsters are watching this you know and you get lipo batteries these are the old style with that curve that just you know you got a minute or two of the actual real good pop out of it and then that that curve just started going down for the power until eventually it was just a yeah the, the slow death it was it was always sad i've got uh let's see uh where am i at here chris watson he says i love those tyco trucks i had a rebound as a kid and i loved it i still remember the day i saw that commercial and i knew i had to have it yep those commercials man they sold so many of us josh you can go through a couple i think there's more facebook comments here i've got a few more of these we got one Dallas Sibley here. The only thing left of my poor old eliminator, and he wrote it hard, and it's, it's a photo of his uh, a black eliminator body. If you want to go to the Trigger King Facebook page and look at that, that poor body's been through some abuse, man. <laughs> I, let's see. Low Blue Ranger. Uh, he says, Tyco Turbo Hammer for me. Love that thing. Yep. A lot of love for the, uh, a lot of love for those. Stephen Murphy here on Facebook. I had the Tyco Mutator. It was an in unbreakable truck i sold it or excuse me i had it for many years and sold it to my cousin he had it for a few years too brought it back to the dirt brought it back dirt cheap because the battery had died and someone stole it it's the unfortunate story there for him but you know like i said that mutator was something that i desperately wanted as a kid and you know i think after we get done here i'm gonna start looking at ebay auctions on those things yeah i'm gonna right they're gonna go through the roof <laughs> um let's see here excuse me toxic 43 tyco rampage exclamation point mini truck body stretched and raked out towards the rear with a huge spoiler on it six wheels smallest towards the front the medium in the center the largest in the rear tank style drive with the rear four wheels driven there was no suspension but with a six volt turbo pack that thing could fly and it came in the best color black i need to look at the rampage real fast here josh kind of sounds like a scorcher with a truck body yeah, yeah I wonder if that's what it is. Yes. Well, here, Josh, read a comment. I'm going to pull this one up. I think it's, I'm going to do We that. got one here from Devin. I th I'm going to mispronounce the last name, Miners. Uh, it says, my grandpa bought me a used fast track from a yard sale when I was a kid. It was yellow, and it was the most awesome thing I had. I remember putting it on the roof of my house and trying to drive over the roof. Yep, it did it. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I couldn't get my trucks up on the roof. If I would have done that when I was a kid, I can imagine being screamed at by my mother. <laughs> yeah. Um, and now here we are, we're jumping campers with these things. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> now with trucks, there are a lot more money too. Let's see here. Okay, so check this out. Where is it here? I just had it pulled up. Here's oh, Rampage. Oh, oh, wow, okay, yeah. So it does look similar, but it is different. That does look pretty cool though. It's kind um, of like a mini six wheel hammer. Yeah, it looks yeah, it like looks it. Like a, it looks like they just repurposed a hammer body and threw this thing on there. On the Scorcher chassis and raised it up. It looks like a kit. Uh, what is it called? A kit bash, I think, as modelers call it, when you just throw some different stuff together. But pretty cool, though. Um, we have another comment here. I've got something pulled up. Uh, where is it here? Sorry. 
uh, that uh, JP Winter says the Rattler 10 wheel drive. Now look at this. I, I remember a commercial for this thing. Is that what Chris Blank's trying to build in his basement? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if this was Tyco though, but it's Buddy I, L it looks like. Okay. So, oh yeah. Yep. I see the Buddy L thing. Okay. I do remember. Seeing uh, okay. I do. Rem it's like a land train. Yeah. I, I don't recall ever seeing one of those though. Hey, yeah. you want to blow? You want to blow some people's mind, Doug? Look up that uh, the beast that I told you about. What am I looking up? Look up the beast. Oh, is that that uh... the one that I the one that I sent you? A couple photos that I sent you. Yeah, I gotta find those real fast. Read a comment here while I look, Josh. All right, we got Mike Ivan here. Not my photo, but this was my first big RC growing up. Came with a seven point two volt, but I remember throwing a nine point six V off of the mutator. Uh, this truck, I'm not sure if I can read the name on it. It says Scorpion on it. Uh, it's a yellow, a pretty good looking yellow truck. Kind of reminds me in a sense of the Bandit that we had talked about, except the tires, the front and, the front and rear tires were about the same size. Growing up, uh, I had a, it was a Tyco, but I think it kind of fell under the radar, but it was a monster truck. It was a four wheel drive monster Jeep. Um, Mine was kind of an orangey red, so naturally I called it hot stuff. Um, slowest thing in the world, runs on six or eight triple or double A batteries. Um, but the fact that it was four wheel drive is pretty cool. I still I still have that. Just gave it to my my son to drive around, so he's learning to drive an RC on that truck. Let, Josh, I've got your beast thing pulled up. Let me uh, let me go through some fast comments real quick here to get through them. Uh, let's see. I've got uh, Sean Powers. He says I had a fast tracks and the tracks flew off fast. Three limb slim 13 says Tyco turbo outlaw in the bandit. We have a couple more. Carrie Wren says I still have my turbo outlaw. A lot of love for the outlaw here. Um, also had the 9.6 volt bandit in the turbo hopper. Unfortunately, they did not survive. We got, uh, we got one here on Facebook from Chris Blank. It's an interesting story. When he worked at Six Flags, he got to be a demo driver for Tyco. And for three days, he had to show off the, the fast tracks. Uh, one of the designers was there too. He had a blast driving them. And then he got given one of the trucks, which he's uh, he looks like he's repainted and thrown some flame decals on. Pretty cool looking little vehicle. Chris, if you're listening to this, bring this to a Trigger King event. I want to look at it and possibly drive it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, I, he's, he told me that story when we were talking about this and, uh, he's shy to get on, but I'd like to hear that. He also worked with some clod busters back at six flags back in the day too. And, oh yeah. Um, there, there's still some six flags clod busters floating around out there with like all JPS and it's crazy that the amount of stuff. money they put in there just to have them drive like half a mile an hour. I know. Yeah. It's funny. I but know. when I was at the parks, those were the coolest things ever. Cause they were, a, a scale monster truck beyond anything that I had seen. Uh, and they had cars in there. And so my eyes got real wide uh, every time I saw them for 50 cents or a dollar to drive. Yeah. I could spend were... the whole day at the park just doing that. <laughs> yep. Um, two more here. I have Soul RC who says their first RC was a Nico Lobo and a Sears Roebuck version for real. And we have DSC 1320, who says the fast tracks and the big Bubba truck were my gateway drugs into the hobby. I always wanted a clod. Now at 40 years old, I just purchased my first clod buster. I can't believe I've owned over 100 RCs and just now getting a clod. Well, welcome to the club, man. Better, better late than never, right? And there's always, your first clod is always great, no matter when you get it. Okay. You, Josh, you got any more? Well, we got Joshua, I'm going to, again, butcher the last name. I apologize. Kalu, Kalui. Uh, he misses his Tyco Wild Thing 2 and the rebound. Some of the best memories as a kid. He got into hobby grade RCs because of these things. This Wild Thing 2 is a pretty gnarly looking little truck, a uh, little buggy, actually. It's got a big wing on the back of it. Um, then we have, there was one in here I had skipped over and I can't find it. Give me one sec here. Another one I'm gonna I'm gonna mess up the name here. Jason Tugad. Sorry. <laughs> Closest thing I had to a hobby grade vehicle growing up, Tyco Turbo Hammer. Again, the big neon yellow truck. Loved it. One of my absolute favorite RCs of all time. All right. That about that it, Josh? 
yeah, that's about all I can see in here. Uh, we got, well, Ryan Rolston. I'll, I'll do this one really fast here. Uh, says, I have a Fast Tracks, Turbo Buggy, and a Typhon, along with the 110 scale Grave Digger that they had. I didn't know Tycho did a Grave Digger. That one might be, uh, I don't know if he's, what he's talking about there. Sorry. Yeah, not, I don't know. Not I've got a Tyco, uh 7.2 volt spider man i think it's from the earlier 2000s um so there might have been a, a grave digger counterpart for that okay that probably now, makes sense now what you, oh wait yeah there was a tyco grave digger the the real big grave digger trucks right oh no mine is smaller than a rc hammer um i don't know it's probably this big um yeah, I mean, smaller than the hammers, smaller than the bandit, uh, limited suspension. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, Tyco did have a deal with Monster Jam at one point, and if I'm gonna have to dig into my closet, but I'm fairly certain I've got a really giant Grave Digger truck back there still. Huh. Gotta bring yeah, all of our toys to an event. Oh yeah, and I can imagine my car is gonna love me for being piled completely full. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, not already right. Oh yeah, exactly. Especially that truck. If I if it's the truck that I remember, I don't know if I still have it or not. But yeah, if I if I find it, I'm gonna yank it out and I'll post some pictures of it. Please do. Um, with that, guys. Hey, the show. Uh, thank you everybody for thank you everybody for writing in with a comment. We had a ton of comments. Uh, thank you, Chris, also for joining us today on this one. Um, before we go here, uh, Chris, anything to plug? Uh, you know, Tyco made my Christmases every year for a number of years. Um, and so that means a lot, but, uh, for me, you can follow mean duck RC racing on Facebook. Um, check us out and, uh, check us out at trigger King events. Josh retro monster truck review. This week is a uh, special guest. Dan Chichagosh is going to be on the show and we're talking Hampton, Virginia, 1988. Um, and also if you want to follow it, uh, Instagram retro MT review, and you can follow it on Facebook at retro monster truck review uh don't forget josh Rhodes rc racing on facebook to keep up with everything that i do rc wise as well as josh dig Rhodes on instagram uh, i'll be posting some more slow-mo stuff here soon on there cool i'll have links in the description here to the mean duck page for chris and uh, for all josh's endeavors here so um with that said guys thank you very much for watching appreciate the support that this uh this show's getting we'll be back next week with another topic and of course leave a comment below what was your favorite tyco what was your favorite RC monster truck? Whatever. If you've got a suggestion for a show you'd like to see us do coming up and uh, trigger King, we will be racing again. I know some people have been asking, Hey, when are you guys going to be doing an event again? We're going to be doing it soon here. Um, it's just trying to get through the winter. We're almost there though. We're going to be kicking up in March and we actually have some ideas for some uh, things before then that we're going to potentially do. So uh, thank you guys very much for watching and we will see you soon. <laughs>